Quick question for you. What do Muhammad and Al Bundy have in common? Uh, oh, um, involved with institutes you can't disparage. There, there you go. Uh, created the same amount of great literature. Ooh, uh, same yeah. last name as a guy who killed a lot of women. Uh, there you go. <laughs> um, there you go. What about uh, the words married and children apply to both? <laughs> ooh, ooh, fair. fair. <laughs> Change out one word there. All right. So, yeah, yeah, all of that. But if you have familiarity with both the Quran and Mary with children, among the first answers that you'll have come to is tells the same fucking story over and over again and expects you to continuously give a shit. You guys are crazy. You never knew what that family was going to get up to next. <laughs> uh. Salad with a cigarette inside. So funny. That would be terrible. Uh. Who would want that? And, of course, joining us to read the same thing over and over again some more is my lovely wife, Lucinda. Lucinda, you're fucking up a lot of when will she divorce him over this shit betting boards by being here today. I appreciate it. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, but I've got my own money on August. So. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, Frank we'll <laughs> well, I guess we need to knock out what we can while we can. So uh, why don't you start us off with Surah 24, The Light. All right. So after explaining that this is indeed a chapter of the Quran, we jump straight into the vile fuckery with orders to lash adulterers a hundred times each. A rule, by the way, that is still often followed in the Muslim world. Oh, well, right. And as if that's not enough, it tells you to gather around and enjoy watching it, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, once again, by the way, the Saudi version is drastically different here. The first part is the same about the hundred lashes, but then it says in parentheses, quote, this punishment is for unmarried persons guilty of the above crime. But if married persons commit it, the punishment is to stone them to death. Mm -hmm. End quote. Jesus. So, uh, yeah, my <laughs> new technique for finding crazy shit is just control F and search for parentheses. Like, don't, <laughs> right? don't say, oh, Jews, just any parentheses, pretty much. A any clarification Anything they clarify makes things worse. It's yeah. ridiculous. I, I, yes. It's, it, the most amazing thing is that means that somebody went through this book and said, I don't know, guys, seems a little namby-pamby about the punishment, a little vague on the Jew hate. You think yeah. we could ramp that up? And they did. Okay, mm -hmm. look, you guys are being typical atheists, ignoring the context of this passage. Because, look, Med Medinan, right? So that's French for median. No, it's not. And nope. if you take all the letters <laughs> nope. in Roman numerals, they add up to... Only four digits off the phone number for Valerie and James Ilbert of Wanton, Wisconsin, who have a okay. dog named Skipper, so it's clear you can skip this passage. I would like oh, a book deal, please. Yes. <laughs> I would like a book deal. Well, if nothing else, you could write an Indiana Jones script like that. <laughs> also, uh, one other thing about this section. In verses 4 and 5, it says, Those who accuse women without producing four witnesses should be flogged 80 times, except... Those who repent afterwards. <laughs> Sorry. What? So basically, uh, if her ashes weigh the same as a duck, she wasn't a witch, and you should uh, unburn her. What, <laughs> right. what the fuck are they talking about? Just add water. Well, <laughs> but if a man accuses his wife of fucking around and has no witness, he has to swear to God that he's not lying five times, and then if mm. God doesn't strike him dead for lying, obviously she's guilty. I mean, that's how I figured out OJ was innocent. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> but but with Ito. if you swear five more times, uh, he, he owes you $33 million. He's oh, just, no. he's still innocent. He's still innocent <laughs> criminally, but owes yeah, you a bunch right, of money that right. he won't pay you. Civilly. Yeah. yeah. But, but there's a second part to the swearing thing, too. If she swears to God five times that he's lying, then God obviously doesn't give enough of a fuck about this couple to smite either one of them and... Right. Whatever. <laughs> and if they swear at the same time, it's whoever says the other one's name first, then they buy you a Coke, right? Games are yes. fun. <laughs> Games are fun. I'm glad this is the second largest religion in the world. <laughs> Still, though, I feel like you're not allowed to quintuple stamp a quintuple stamp. That's just... <laughs> I mean, think about Overkill. the math there. That's ridiculous. Okay, at what point are pogs involved? Because I've been holding on to some very valuable slammers. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I believe that's in the Hadith. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and then we get what seems to be Muhammad and uh, Dr. Seuss guarding a bridge with riddles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is verse 26. Yes. Quote, bad statements are for bad people or bad women for bad men and bad people for bad statements or bad men for bad women. <laughs> 
good statements are for good people oh, or good women for good men and good people for good statements or good men for good women. Such good people are innocent of each and every bad statement which they say, end quote, but redfish, where is the oh, rush? I mean, come on. Uh, I, I know this one. I know this one. He was standing on an ice block that was a midget. It's a midget <laughs> ice block. The, uh, umbrella? <laughs> and then we finally, <laughs> finally get some burka talk. That's the name of me and Lucinda's new chat show. Yeah, <laughs> the view through the eye slit. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I'm in. The view I'm and a in. Okay, this is fucking ridiculous. There's a full page basically about who can and can't see your cleavage. Mm -hmm. And then it says, and don't swing your legs and waft your vagina smell in the air either, you harlot. <laughs> and basically, that's what it says verbatim. It also tells you not to prostitute your slaves unless they're cool with it. Mm -hmm. Right. Where's that staff meeting? Okay, guys, we've got an exciting new business opportunity, and you're going to want to say no, but hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. Of course, we also learned that all the animals pray and that they're all Muslims. Mm -hmm, of course. Yeah, it seems like I'd have noticed one of those little chipmunk prayer rugs by now, but whatever. <laughs> right, to Aww. be fair, my pug lies down at least 12 times a day. Well, there's <laughs> various directions. My cats seem Muslim, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Allah Akbar, look at my butthole. Allah <laughs> Akbar, <laughs> nine minutes. Apparently, also, it's okay for old ladies to show their cleavage. But they probably shouldn't. Says it in verse 60. It yeah. does. I like this Muhammad guy. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, we end on a rare point of agreement, and uh, we move on to Surah 25, which is alternately titled The Criterion, The Standard, or The Standard of True and False. And by the way, if you're wondering why God doesn't just show you an angel and prove he exists, he explains in verse 21 that it's because you're not good enough for his angels. Right. Damn it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, at least not yet. It, mm -hmm. It's like talking to someone who wired $1,000 to Nigeria 1,400 years ago, and they're like, yeah, I'm <laughs> just about to get a check for a uh, billion dollars. So that, that's happening. Stop <laughs> doubting me. It's like talking to a Christian waiting for Jesus, but slightly less stupid. Still stupid, mm -hmm. but like, you know, 600 years less stupid. Right. <laughs> and and in, in case that wasn't stupid enough for you, remember that earlier in this thing, he definitely promised us angels in any wars we might fight. So apparently it's like an angels in the outfield situation. Muhammad's <laughs> going to stand there on the sidelines. Flat. Flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew Danny Glover was a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> why else would he be hanging out with Mel Gibson so often? Exactly. Um, he also addresses the question of why the fuck God would send him revelations piecemeal instead of all at once. And his answer is hilarious. He's like, what, the omniscient being is just supposed to predict what your objections are going to be? Come on, come on. <laughs> right. I feel like Muhammad had the scribe version of Hermione Granger, just kept raising her hand like, okay, but wouldn't you need to get it all at once? It's like, okay, you know what? Ten clits from Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> But still. <laughs> then we get the argument from shadow expansion. Okay, he says. We do. We really do. <laughs> hey, look, if God wanted to, he could have made your shadow the same length all the time. And then where would you be? Fucked. That's where. So if Allah isn't God, who's lengthening your shadow every night, Mr. Know It All? That's his <laughs> argument. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he claims that God made it so all the shadows completely <laughs> disappear at 12 <laughs> noon. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently the entire world is on the Tropic of Cancer on June 21st or the Tropic of Capricorn on December 21st. <laughs> and nothing is elevated off the ground ever. No. Or uh -uh. ever wider than its base. It's <laughs> What? Okay. Well, that last one is true of some things. I'm, I'm told it's like a coin. It's not like a coin. Uh, then in verse 53... <laughs> <laughs> then in verse 53, we get one of my favorite nuggets of stupid so far. It says, quote, it is he who released the two bodies of flowing water, one sweet and fresh and the other salty and bitter, and set up an insurmountable barrier between them, end quote. So, you know, estuaries disprove this book. Yeah. That's all it takes. Just that. Done. Haven't they heard of the Great Flood? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Read a book. Well, hopefully Muhammad can tell us about it again in oh, Surah 26 yes. here, The Poets. Mm -hmm. And in this one, most honors up to you. Slurping out of the beer, he just put our cigarette in. <laughs> and he says, did I ever tell you, you know, about that time Moses went to see the Pharaoh? 
And yes, he tells that fucking story again. He tells the goddamn detail Moses again. story again. We've said that twice in every one of these fucking segments, and still the goddamn book thinks we need to read this one more fucking time. How is that possible? How is it even possible that the book tells the same story in the same details six dozen times? Yeah, Muhammad might as well start reading... Michelle Obama's speeches at this point. Just <laughs> do it. Perfect. And Allah told me to follow your dreams and don't tell anyone about the girls we make Trump steaks out of. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds deaf, right? <laughs> what, what kind of accent is that? Deaf communist, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he follows it up with the story of Abraham. Mm-hmm. That's right. This surah is a rerun. It is. Yep. Yeah, but somehow uh, worse this time. A, a worse rerun. It, it's like the week that Zach and Kelly went on a drug bender in Vegas to save by the bell. It was one of those, hey, remember when episodes? <laughs> yeah. and fuzzy and outside vague. Yeah. In a book full of reruns, this chapter is a clip show. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> exactly. <laughs> And, of course, since we're basically just doing shout-outs to all the recurring characters in this book, we also get more details on God's she-camel. Yeah. R.I.P. she-camel. <laughs> not, not on the microphones. Prank wars. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and speaking of prank wars, they once again tell us that the she-camel was hamstrung, but they never offer an explanation as to why these people decided to cripple a camel. <laughs> You see, there was a karate tournament, and uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> sweep the leg. I just got this vision of a camel doing the crane technique. Now I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> Hilarious. And then we get Lot, a bunch of shit about how we're going to burn in hell, and a promise that the Quran was definitely not written by demons. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm sorry, if I believed in demons, this section would definitely make me think this book was written by demons. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. I immediately <laughs> pictured a demon in Groucho glasses just whistling and twiddling his thumbs, <laughs> sweating. <laughs> no demons in here. No demons in here. <laughs> Again, I guess we can close on something we all agree on. Yes, this book wasn't written by demons. Uh, well done, sir. And now it's on to Surah 27, The Ants. I think the this ants! might be my favorite Surah. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, here we are, seven verses in, when Muhammad says, quote, tell of Moses. <laughs> That's right. Great. More fucking Moses. And, and I, again, Done. I can't emphasize this enough. It's not a different story about Moses. It's no. not a prequel or a sequel. It's not the new adventures of <laughs> Moses. It's the same fucking story he just told in Surah 26 yes. that he had already told a hundred times about God sending Moses to Egypt to free the Jews. Yeah, and it's not like Moses didn't do a bunch of other interesting stuff in the story. Right. Like, tell us about how he wrote the Declaration of Independence. That's going to be a great story. <laughs> really, really interesting. Or how he buried all those fossils. Like, that's yeah. crazy interesting. <laughs> Fossil fuels don't burn that hot. Skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> But then he talks about David and Solomon for a bit, which is a welcome relief, anybody but Moses. But in this bit, he suggests that Solomon could speak fluent bird. Mm -hmm. Never heard that one before. Yeah, but but he could not speak fluent bat language. So (laughs) Bible's wrong, Quran's right. (laughs) There there you go. QED. Andy's cover for his sex trafficking operation. (laughs) (laughs) I want to get that rumor deep. I thought he was a drug dealer. Is he? (laughs) It's both? How do you think he pays for the drugs? Ah, uh, that makes a lot more sense. Sex. Uh, you well, trafficking. speaking of drugs, the, the peyote kicks in or something right here, because holy oh, shit, does this get weird. Oh, my God. Yep. This was the greatest Quranic moment so far. <laughs> okay, so Mo decides to tell us about a battle, with no warning, mind you, where you've got Solomon, his army, his birds, <laughs> and his demons on one side. An army and of on demons? The, yes. Mm-hmm. And on the other side, you know what you get? Why talking ants, of course, because that's talking ants. <laughs> talking I just see armored ants. chimpanzees stripping branches in the armory. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually picturing more like a Braveheart scenario. There's a line of ants charging at an army of demons and humans. Just hold, hold, hold <laughs> now! They still got a bunch of toothpicks and. <laughs> <laughs> General Lanigan reporting for duty, sir. So Solomon's looking over his army, and he notices that the hoopoe bird isn't in the ranks, overslept or something, which sucks, because how the fuck are you going to fight ants with demons if you don't have the hoopoe bird, obviously? So he starts totally losing his shit over it. (laughs) This is the worst battle of five armies ever. First of all, it's only four armies, and it's humans, demons, and birds versus 
talking ants. So <laughs> I think I found a better book than this. I think I found a few. All right. I found a few. Beg to Several. differ. All right. So when Solomon's about to completely lose his shit, he finds out that the Hoopo bird was actually off spying on the satanic queen of the ants. Well, <laughs> I think. No, the ants, I think, just charged away from battle. We don't hear much more from them. This was the queen of Sheba, actually. Uh, I guess the, okay. the talking ants were just Whatever. making a cameo. Oh, but, but this brings up a hard question. Which talking ant story is less enjoyable to consume? The Koran or Ants, the animated movie? Ah. Ooh, I gotta go with ants still. Yeah. Now. Nobody cares about a neurotic ant, Woody Allen. Nobody! <laughs> you killed your daughter on the inside. <laughs> Not, you know... <laughs> Hold on, though. I thought Soon Yi was his granddaughter. Was was that? <laughs> it's, not... <laughs> it's complicated. Morgan okay. Freeman. So, the... <laughs> <laughs> so the queen tries to say she's sorry, but Solomon isn't hearing any of that shit. So he sends some of his demons to steal her throne so that he can do a crazy reveal with it later, or something. something. Yeah, I was expecting at any minute to come across a verse that just said, and then Solomon was like, kapow, kapow, boom, karate, and she was like, <laughs> oh, Solomon. <laughs> My boobs are way too big for this dress. <laughs> uh, sometimes me and Eli like to do a little bit of role playing. We were just uh, I call Solomon next time. <laughs> we, we said no dibs. Whatever. My boobs are too big for this dress. <laughs> Yours, mine are. Yours are. We both have large then, boobs. I guess. <laughs> Solomon mine. just gives up. You know, you bring this army of demons and talking birds and shit out, and she's like, oh, well, I don't want to fuck with them, and gives up. This is the closest the book ever came to interesting, and it just fell asleep with your dick in its hand here. <laughs> yeah, well, b by the way, Dutch Rudder still works there. I'm just saying. <laughs> and, and I call Sheba next time. I know he said no dames, <laughs> but I, I call Sheba. Okay, but only if Noah agrees to be the hoop over. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when people watch. And birds. And birds. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> And no, <laughs> and then it's it's forty verses of come on, man, trees, and you're gonna burn in hell if you don't believe me. But we do get our first mention of the Daba, mm. or the beast of the earth, in verse eighty two, and apparently that's their much cooler named version of the Antichrist. I guess, I guess. Or the beast of the what, Revelation. Yeah, apparently it shows up right after the Earth switches its orbit, so that the sun rises in the west. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, teaser well, for god awful movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sun's rising in the west, or Everyone started facing south. It's one or the other. Yeah. One, one of those two. Options. And this wasn't actually in the Quran, but I found a description of what the beast, what the Daba looks like. This comes from the Tafsir al Kurtubi. I don't know. Kurtubi. It's like Hubert wrote it. I don't know. It, 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 this is the description. Quote. Its head is like the head of a bull. Its eyes are like the eyes of a pig. <laughs> its ears are like the ears of an elephant. Its horns are like the horns of a stag. Its neck is like the neck of an ostrich. Its chest is like the chest of a lion. Its color is like the color of a tiger. Its haunches are like the haunches of a cat. Its tail is like the tail of a ram. And its legs are like the legs of a camel. Okay. Wait, there's more. <laughs> Between each pair of its joints is a distance of 12 cubits. <laughs> I feel like the seven-headed dragon could totally kick its ass. It's a, yeah, <laughs> that is the least scary animal imaginable. That's, it, that's a right. Jimmy Neutron episode, not an end times <laughs> <episode>. <laughs> And it's got elephant ears. I love that. But I just want to hear like a racist song yeah, about how it can't Dumbo fly. Fun. I love it. <laughs> it's Allegedly. Not racist, apparently. <laughs> Still better than Batman v Superman, though. It, well, yeah. yes, yes, it is. No, it's true of all things, yeah. <laughs> and 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 even though anything would be a letdown after the Surah with the Daba and the ants, we're going to mop up with another really shitty one to close, and that'd be Surah Twenty Eight: The Narrations or the Stories. Opening line: These are the verses from the book that makes things clear. We shall narrate to you some of the story of Moses and Pharaoh. <sighs> I, I believe that's Arabic for go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> there is a weird story at the end about Korah, though. I, I guess the moral here is never envy wealthy people because you never know when God is going to murder them and their families. Mm -hmm. Mo, uh, didn't you mean for them to get rich and then they... It's like, a, just write it down, Steve. Just write <laughs> the story <laughs> down. <laughs> Come on, Hermione. And that's all the Quran we're going to suffer through this weekend. For whatever it's worth, the title of the story that we're going to be starting on next time is The Spider. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, given the chapter naming conventions of this book, that could just mean that at some point Muhammad says spied and her real close together. But the ants didn't disappoint, so who knows? Maybe Allah fights a giant spider in the next time. We won't know until Quran <laughs> Maniacs returns in episode 183. Oh, I hope it's a robot spider. Oh, Muhammad just <laughs> fucking a girl in a water tower. <laughs> <laughs>
Wild, wild Western imperialism. <laughs> <laughs> Sir 29. Drive. Butter, butter. And the Skype window fucks up my shit. That was fun. Corona me. Uh, yeah, we're getting pretty good at that, guys. All right, I'm Shit sending you the skits page. The skit that you're gonna want, or that we're gonna want you for, is on the mm -hmm. second page. Mm -hmm. It's the second skit, and you'll be reading the green lines. All right. Green, like weed, man. Bottom second page green okay students that part that's you mm, sweet mm. you guys ready to go on the skit i am <clears throat> ready yes paranormal jactivity oh sorry okay students if you'll open your new biology textbook um miss miss anderson this is the Bible. Yes. Well, thanks to President Trump, this is now used as a document across school subjects. So let's get to it, shall we? Billy, why don't you read first? Uh, okay. It is like a grain of mustard, must, mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. Mark 4.31. Now, who can tell me what that means? Um, um, do, does it mean that mustard seeds are the smallest seed on the earth? It does in a whole bunch of fucking translations, but what does that mean? Um, it, is it that, like, fennel seeds and stuff aren't actually seeds? Very They're good! So let me just fix this chart here. I'm smart. Nice. So next week, we'll have a pop quiz how seeds and other dirt grow. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm having my period, and the nurse says I need to leave town for a week. Yeah, make it two, just for to be safe. Grow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop it there.